Hello, welcome. Nice to see you here. Let's take a look together at the fundamentals of meditation. Why, how, why it might be one of the most important things we do in our lives. Some short practices just to get an, a glimpse, get a sense of what is it that we are talking about, the nature of the practice. Some tips. I don't want this video to be too long, so there is a link to resources and other videos that expand on some of the things that I'm talking about here. What is meditation? One way to put it is that normally, in our normal state, we are experiencing the world and the reality through our minds and through our senses. In meditation, we take a look at our mind and senses. Just like these glasses, I am looking through this lens. And this is one way that the reality appears. Meditation is to take a look at the lens through which we observe the world. Our reality is shaped by this lens. The lens that is our mind. In fact, our mind is the base of anything we do in life, any decision we make, how we respond to anything, the ideas we hold about ourselves and others and what our life can be. Our minds are the basis of our happiness or our misery. You could say that our lives literally depend on it. And yet, we don't do much or sometimes nothing at all to observe the mechanisms of the mind. We are so busy trying to fix the externals. And although they are important, they are always filtered through our mind. So this is why meditation is important. And not all types of meditations are the same. There are many types of meditations that are designed as some kind of a mental exercise for focus, for reducing anxiety. And those are wonderful, wonderful tools. But insight meditations, as we explore them here, are really to get to the nature of our mind and to be able to uh, be unmoved by the mind, but also to see many of the distortions of our lens, distortions of the reality, the ways that we see that are close to illusions, how our minds can fool us or trick us to think something. So, let's get into it. It's important to be in a comfortable position, sit straight, because we want our chest to be open, we don't want to bulge over, we don't want to bend over like this, because this gives a sense of uh, anxiety in the body, it's kind of a... We want to be open. You can sit on the floor, you can sit on the chair, sitting on the floor like this, make sure that your hips are just a bit higher than, than your knees, because otherwise, again, you will be bulging forward. Find your balance. 
other way, by the way, to sit on the floor that is suitable actually for many people. It might be even better way than sitting like this is to take a high cushion higher than this combination <laughs> and sit like this. Ah, that would be higher with a higher cushion. Make sure that your head is not tilted forward too much. Let's get me this microphone out of the way. Because that gives you the head tilted forward, gives you the signal, gives the brain the signal that it's time to sleep. And we don't want that, do we? <laughs> we want alertness. Alertness is not activity, is not passivity. Alertness is a quality of awareness. And this is something we want to cultivate, this alertness in our lives, not just sitting in a time of meditation. This is where meditation makes a difference in our lives and others. So, before starting any meditation, we want to bring our awareness fully here. Some people are used to wait for this. Ah, I'm just gonna be here in five minutes and slowly bring my awareness and... Our awareness can be here right now. It might be distracted, it might be, but still, this is really important that we practice this from the beginning, just having our awareness before we even start the so-called meditation. We want to understand the difference between being aware of what is going on, being aware, being present, and not being present, which is also called being lost in thought. Just you are somewhere else. So, let's experience this for ourselves. We are going to take a look at the sensations first. For just a couple of minutes, I will prompt you some things or might say some things to direct your attention or to open your attention. Uh, let's do this discover together and let's go in as if this is the first time we enter a human body with curiosity, with sense of wonder, because it's only then that we can make discoveries. If we open, if we open our awareness, if we open up, accepting what is here. So, let's close our eyes. Take a couple of deep breaths with a slow exhale through your nose and out from your nose preferably low in the belly. Now, count until six. With the inhale, hold your breath for four counts and exhale for eight. Let's do a couple of these. Six, four, eight.
Now become aware gently of the sensations in the body. You can scan your body from top to down or down, up, or just be aware of different things in this moment going on in the body. Don't try to change anything or linger too long on any sensation. See if you can allow everything to just arrive at you. Now, in your right hand, slightly touch the thumb and index finger. And you can very slightly rub the fingers together, the top of these two fingers. And bring all your attention to the top of these two fingers, your thumb and the index finger. All your attention there. See how close you can get. Now keep rubbing these two fingers gently together, but now return your awareness to the whole body again. See if that's possible. Every time your attention goes to those two fingers, just bring it back to the whole body. But keep rubbing those fingers together. Now, point your eyes, which are closed, of course, but two between your eyebrows, a bit up. And put your focus there. And on top of your fingers. So your eyes pointed towards your forehead, between the eyebrows, and your attention is on your fingers. Don't just struggle with it, just see if it's possible. Now let your eyes return to the natural position and look behind your closed eyes as if you are looking at a deep, far horizon. 
as if your eyes are getting away from each other, almost parallel to each other. And release that tension from fingers, bring it back to the body again. But it's still rubbing the fingers. Your attention is not there. Our attention is like a spotlight. And awareness is like a omni light or a light that goes in all directions. Let's see if you can sense that difference. So let's now focus again on the fingers. Bring that spotlight on those fingers. Sense everything there is there. And now back to this all directional light. Still rubbing fingers, but there is no attention going down. Do it one more time. The spotlight on the fingers. And release it. Sense as if a light is coming outside of you and it's shining on everything around you, in all directions. Everything gets the same amount of light. Everything comes forward in this light. But you're not putting a spotlight on anything. Now one more time, let's go to the fingers. See if there is a sensation you didn't notice before. Anything? And release that to spotlight, come back. Okay, let's open our eyes. How did that go? There is a great chance that you couldn't even do a lot of it because your mind took you to different places. The thoughts came about something you need to do or a memory or a, ah, I know this or hmm, what is the plan? Mm -hmm. Ah, this is interesting. Hmm, this is, a, what is this? All of these are thoughts. All of these are appearing. So, Let's now take a look at our thoughts. And before we do, why is it so why is it important to even look at the thoughts? What is it that we are trying to discover? Well, probably one of the greatest freedoms in life. And I don't want you to believe me or all the thousands and millions of people who, who would say that, but to experience it for yourself, because that's only freedom. That is real. Thoughts, we usually have the idea that are, okay, I have this thought about this vacation in the future, or I have this thought about this food I'm gonna eat tomorrow. Of course, those are thoughts. But there are other types of thoughts also. And those are the thoughts that we are less sensitive to detect. And those thoughts actually run our lives. Those are thoughts like, mm, I'm not good. I don't know. I am so angry. Jealousy. Rumination, when you cannot let go of an idea. You know, okay, it's enough, but it keeps going on. These are all moments that we are lost in thought. So this is why it is important that we practice this. And we can get to a place 
where anything that happens in our lives that is a thought, especially the negative ones, we have the choice to go with it or let it be. And to truly realize this means, again, one of the greatest freedoms in life, that you are in charge of your inner life. So you can never be um, regretful or, or in anger more than a couple of seconds or minutes, because then you realize that you are lost in a thought. You can return. Or you can choose to go with the thoughts, because thoughts are beautiful. If they are not the self-referential uh, negative ruminations. Because, you see, we don't want to stop thought. We want to liberate the thought. We want to liberate the imagination. But we don't want to, the imagination to become source of suffering, which is most of the time. So... With that said, let's just take it again, bringing our awareness here, not waiting for something to happen later. No, just our here. It is not something special that we need. It is not some meditative state that we need to get in. Awareness has nothing to do with meditative states. Awareness can be here because we are awareness. But... For now, bring the awareness again here, bring curiosity, bring sense of wonder. We are going to take a look at our mind. So, ready? Let's see what we discover. Close your eyes. And become aware of the sounds in the room. Allow everything to be just as it is, just like that uh, all directional light. If you are already lost in thought, which most of us probably are, come back to my voice, come back to this moment, realizing, ah, I am practicing this. And see if you can recognize the next thing that pulls you away. can be a deluge of different things pulling on you. See if you can notice them. Again, we are not trying to do anything. We are not trying to calm the mind or do anything, the way, especially not judge the mind, because judgment itself, see if you can see this already, judgment itself is also a thought. So we are observing thought. That means we cannot have judgments. It is as if we are looking under the hood to see what is going on in the mind of this person.
this person that we take ourselves to be, what is uh, he or she thinking? Don't go with the thoughts, let them pass by, we are just observing, so we are not going with them anywhere. And if we stay away, we don't touch them, they don't come and grab us. See if you can see the difference, that's the only thing we are doing here, the difference between uh, going with the thoughts or being here. So now let's open our eyes again. Welcome back. It is possible that you went to many different places. How was it to take a closer look? Must have was realized that our minds are just an endless stream of thoughts, ideas. And remember, thoughts are also mixed with emotions. So they bring, they, they go hand in hand many, many times. And many of them, we are not even aware that are thoughts, but we get there. Even the sense of I am a person and this person, this personality that I take to be myself, we might discover that is also a bundle of thoughts. And remember when we said that meditation was looking at our minds? That person we take ourselves to be also lives in that mind. But this is something we are going to discover for ourselves, or not. So meditation is also taking a look at that which we take ourselves to be. It might turn out to be an illusion. Who knows? That is not important for now. What is important is that we, in the following practices, Get a clear sense of the difference between being lost in thought and being back. And we also practice this. Every time we do this, something becomes more clearer for us. Of course, meditation has many other benefits. And unfortunately, those are the things that are used to promote Meditation, you know, it's good for anxiety, it's good for depression, uh, against addiction. It uh, uh, can help you live longer or uh, be happier and uh, or uh, it's good for your skin or I don't know. And many of those claims are true and proven scientifically. But the meditation in the way we are exploring here is really beyond that. It's about liberation from illusions, about giving ourselves the gift of life, connecting with life again. So, you see, in our current times, uh, those things are promoted as the benefits of meditations because we live in a time that is uh, obsessed with everything that is measurable and improvable in, in tiny steps. Yet, everything that truly matters in our lives, love, purpose, 
joy, happiness, imagination. All of these things, and many more, none of them are measurable. And yet, they matter the most. So, this already has become a long video. In the next videos, we are going to take a deeper look at different aspects of meditation and deepen our understanding of the practice. So, please let me know how did it go. If there are any questions, any suggestions, I'm really curious to know how you experienced this short time that we had together. Let me know in the comments. And also, don't forget to check the links that are also in the comments that can give you some other resources or point you to other videos that might be helpful. It's wonderful to have you here. It's wonderful to go on a journey of discovery together. And uh, I hope that you join me for the next one soon. Enjoy your day. Bye.